This right here is the uh, uniform I'm going to wear during my next rocket jump. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're examining 20 Daredevil stunts gone horribly wrong. Everyone was panicking because this was totally unexpected, yeah. the cable snapping. You know? For this list, we'll be looking at the feats by iconic stunt performers and inventors that ended tragically. Which Daredevil do you look up to the most? Let us know below. Dean Potter's Wingsuit Crash In May 2015, Dean Potter was reported missing along with Graham Hunt in California's Yosemite National Park. Potter was considered one of the best and most daring performers in the climbing and base jumping realm. On Saturday, Potter and fellow flyer Graham Hunt jumped off Taft Point in Yosemite National Park. Base jumping is illegal in Yosemite and five people have died doing it. He had even been working on improving wingsuits. Potter and Hunt had jumped from Taft Point in the park with their wingsuits, a trip they had done several times before. Unfortunately, the morning after their risky stunt, the two friends' remains were found. Potter and Hunt had lost control as they flew in the air towards a notch of rocks they needed to clear. Both daredevils crashed before they could deploy their parachutes. Potter was a pioneer. He pushed the boundaries of mountain sports, where death is ever present. But, reasoned Potter, getting close to death made him feel more alive. Franz Reichelt's Parachute Test After moving from the then Austro-Hungarian Empire to become a successful tailor in Paris, France, Franz Reichelt was inspired by the increasing popularity of aircraft. So, he started working on a parachute suit that a pilot could wear. After some failed experiments with dummies, Reichelt decided it needed more height to work properly. As such, he chose the iconic Eiffel Tower. But his faith in his invention had the flying tailor strap on his parachute suit for this trial. In February 1912, Reichelt jumped from the first deck at 187 feet up as a group of journalists watched. Sadly, the parachute didn't deploy properly. It wrapped around the inventor as Reichelt fell to his demise. Harry O'Connor's Film Stunt Having been a U.S. Navy SEAL, Harry O'Connor changed direction in his career and began working as a stunt coordinator for films. After being in projects like 2000's The Perfect Storm and Charlie's Angels, he took a job working on 2002's Triple X as a double for Vin Diesel. But it ended tragically when he was filming in Prague, Czech Republic in April 2002. Having already nailed the first take, O'Connor was doing the parasailing stunt near Polatsky Bridge again. However, something went wrong. O'Connor collided with a pillar, perishing on impact. The first take done by the professional was used in the final cut. Triple X was subsequently dedicated to O'Connor's memory. Harry O'Connor, our aerial stunt coordinator, and stuntman doing this stunt here, now uh, unfortunately right there, smacking into the bridge, breaking his neck and dying. This film is dedicated to his memory. Jonathan Goodwin Car Crash Thanks to his impressive feats on Britain's Got Talent in 2019 and America's Got Talent in 2020, Jonathan Goodwin was carving out a name for himself as one of the best escapologists and stunt performers in the world. Tonight I have something very special planned for you. In all the stunts in my book, this is the one my mum didn't want me to try. But then in October 2021, that all fell apart as he rehearsed a stunt for America's Got Talent Extreme. Goodwin was encased in a straitjacket while suspended 30 feet in the air between two vehicles. Before he could escape, Goodwin was crushed by the cars before they were set ablaze. He then fell to the floor. The Daredevil suffered third-degree burns, fractured both legs, and a broken spine, which caused him to be paralyzed from the waist down. It was pretty gnarly, you know, I, I, I did, it sounds very dramatic, you know, sitting here, but I did, I did nearly die. Yeah. Audrey Mest's final free dive. Audrey Mest was known for her amazing free diving abilities. She regularly broke world records, often beating ones she'd previously set. Mucha gente tiene miedo y se preocupa por cosas que no saben, que no entienden. 
Working alongside her husband, Francisco Ferreras, the two were considered the most famous free-diving couple in the world. In October 2002, Mest attempted to break a record off the coast of the Dominican Republic. After a few practice sessions, all seemed to be well. The French national grabbed the cable that pulled her 561 feet into the ocean in a single breath. However, once at the depth, several complications meant Mest couldn't return to the surface before losing consciousness. It truly is astounding to me that so little was put in place for her safety. Even with the help of safety divers and Ferreras getting Mestra out of the water, she wasn't able to be revived. John James's music video. John McMurray, better known as John James, was not only a free skier, but he also conducted stunt performances and created music. The Canadian rapper liked to include his daredevil antics in his music videos. I just came to say hello. In October 2018, after training for months, James was set to walk on the wing of a small Cessna plane as it flew for a music video in British Columbia. But as he moved farther out, the aircraft lost control and began to go into a downward spiral. James held on to the wing. According to his management team, James had planned to walk out onto the wing of a small Cessna while rapping, but that apparently caused the plane to spiral downward. But by the time he let go, he was too close to the ground to open his parachute. While the pilot managed to gain control and land safety, James sadly didn't survive the fall. Kyle Lee Stockings Rope Swing the downside of stunts on the internet is sometimes people that aren't professionals are going to be inspired and try out the feat for themselves. Stop, Paul, stop keeping it old school. And occasionally, it can result in a disaster. After seeing a viral video of a group that created a swing off the Corona Arch near Moab, Utah, Kyle Lee Stocking wanted to emulate it in March 2013. Looking down at the 110-foot drop, Stocking jumped off the arch, holding onto a rope as his friends watched. However, he had miscalculated the length of the rope. It was too long. Stocking swung into the sandstone below, perishing on impact. Mike Hughes's Rocket Test After declaring he believed the Earth was flat, Mad Mike Hughes set out to raise funds to build a rocket so he could photograph the planet's apparent disc-shaped appearance. Do I have people emailing me? Do I have people on Facebook calling me an idiot? Yeah, but I also have people contacting me and says, Michael, you may be the guy who can change the world. You know what I mean? You may be the guy. In February 2020, near Barstow, California, Hughes was ready to launch the homemade steam-powered rocket that he would pilot after years of testing. With the Science Channel filming the event as part of their homemade astronaut series, the rocket soon hit an issue as it took off. The parachute that was meant to put Hughes back on the ground safely released prematurely and detached. This left the rocket to crash land. Hughes sadly didn't survive the impact. The 64-year-old was killed when the rocket plunged back to the ground. You can see a lot of people around this launch. Afterward, Hughes's public relations representative confirmed that the Flat Earth Declaration was a publicity stunt to get funding. Corey Scott's Motorcycle Jump In February 1997, thousands of people packed into the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida to witness the motorcycling skills of Corey Scott as part of a monster car and truck rally event. While he was only 28, he had been performing stunts for years, even showcasing this particular feat several times. Scott was going to take off a ramp that launched him over 70 feet into the air and into a net that he would hold onto. However, on this night, he couldn't grab it. Instead, he bounced off the net. This caused Scott to spin and fall. He landed on his head on the hard floor below, receiving several fatal injuries that he sadly didn't survive from. Wu Yongning's Final Free Climb 
In 2017, Wu Yongning was one of China's biggest social media stars. On top of working in the film industry, he made a name for himself as a daredevil rooftopper, ascending some of the country's tallest buildings with his impressive athleticism, all without safety equipment. But in November, reportedly looking to raise cash for his wedding and medical treatment for his mother, Wu climbed the 62-story Hua Yuanhua Center in Changsha. But as he did his signature pull-ups on the building's edge whilst filming, he struggled to get back up and lost his grip. Wu plummeted and tragically perished from the impact. Gary Wells' Caesar's Palace Fountain Jump in 1967, legendary daredevil Evil Knievel attempted to jump the fountain at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, which we'll have a lot more to say about later. In 1980, motorcycle daredevil Gary Wells decided to attempt the stunt himself for the TV show That's Incredible. Wells did manage to clear the fountain but clipped the landing ramp, leading to a nasty crash. According to some sources, he went on to claim that someone must have moved his ramp. The accident resulted in Wells sustaining a concussion, broken legs, a fractured pelvis, and a tear in an artery. Amazingly, he survived. Alain Robert's Rappling Incident Dubbed the French Spider-Man, Alain Robert has garnered fame for climbing skyscrapers without much gear. On the last 15 meters of the building, unfortunately, uh, there is some grease and there is some oil inside the groove. Then it becomes impossible uh, to jam uh, the right foot. Naturally, this type of exercise comes with enormous risk, and Robert has encountered his share of challenges and injuries. The scariest accident came on September 29, 1982. His rope failed while rappling, and he fell almost 50 feet. So you fell 15 meters down, you yeah. brace yourself, you break your wrists, yeah. everything's broken, all the bones, and you hit your head as well. I, I lost 45% of my blood. He sustained numerous broken bones and a dislocated elbow. He was also partially paralyzed and spent nearly one week in a coma. He fully recovered and went on to make some of the most remarkable climbs of his career, like scaling the Empire State Building in 1994. As far as the NYPD is concerned, this is a very serious matter. According to them, you know, he puts himself in danger and other people in danger by doing things like this. So. Joe Bomino's Plane Jump A strong man and professional weightlifter, Joe Bomino also served as a movie stuntman. One scene called for him and another stuntman to use just one parachute while they both jumped from a plane. However, no one wanted to participate in the outrageously dangerous endeavor, so Bomino did it with a dummy. Once he landed in a body of water, the extreme winds caught his parachute and dragged him around for roughly half an hour. So he decided to use the dummy as a floating life preserver. While he was hauled around at high speeds and could have drowned, Bomino's quick thinking ensured his survival. Richard Guzman's Fall this professional tightrope walker was a member of the famed Flying Willendis, a group of high-wire stunt performers. They can overcome any kind of danger, even though their family has been killed doing this. They can still go up there and do that. He was actually the son-in-law of the group's founder, Carl Willenda, having married his daughter Carla. The man they had followed without question had led them into disaster. In July 1972, Guzman was performing with the troupe when he accidentally touched a live wire. His 60-foot fall was broken by an attentive police officer, but the damage was done. The family has not been immune to the tragedy inherent in the dangers of their work. Several Walendas have died or been injured in high-wire falls. He didn't have a heartbeat, and while a nurse successfully administered CPR at the scene, he passed away in the hospital early the next morning. Larry Walter's Balloon Flight on July 2nd, 1982, people in the U.S. watched in amazement as truck driver Larry Walters took flight over Los Angeles in a lawn chair attached to numerous weather balloons. Larry Walters had always dreamed of flying a balloon to a faraway place. While it makes for a spectacular sight, the stunt is extraordinarily dangerous. Walters survived, but the journey was a rocky one. 
he rose to a surprising height of 16,000 feet and drifted into controlled airspace. To regulate his altitude, he shot several balloons with a pellet gun, but then accidentally dropped it. The balloon reached 16,000 feet, spotted by two astonished airline pilots. On the way down, he got tangled in an active power line. Walters was fined for his stunt and given a Darwin Award. The chair he used ended up at the Smithsonian's Stephen F. Udvarhazy Center, alongside other historic aircraft. Why a lawn chair? What, I mean... American ingenuity. Why not a lawn chair? Yeah. I mean, it was the best... Believe me, I, I looked at baskets, and I looked at gondolas here, and uh, the lawn chair was the best suited means. Yeah. Shalinda Nat Roy's zipline accident. This Indian stuntman held a peculiar world record. He had traveled the furthest distance on a zipline using nothing but his own hair. While donning a ponytail, Roy traveled about 270 feet back in 2011. But in April of 2013, he attempted to break his own record by ziplining over West Bengal's Tista River. While performing the very risky stunt, his hair got caught and he remained dangling above the river for about 45 minutes. Roy had a major heart attack during this time and passed away on the spot. Pavel Kashin's Backflip A stuntman from Russia, Pavel Kashin took an interest in parkour. A discipline popularized through film and television, parkour is often performed on the street without safety equipment. Kashin hailed from St. Petersburg, and in July 2013, he was reportedly performing a stunt on top of a 16-floor apartment complex. He tried to do a backflip on the building's ledge but lost his balance. He didn't survive the ensuing fall. Kashin's friend managed to snap a photo of the final backflip, which was then shared on the internet with the permission of his parents. Jane Wicker's Crash In June of 2013, Ohio's Dayton International Airport was hosting the Vectran Air Show, which obviously contained lots of airborne stunts. Well, I actually did that hang down my second time in the air wing walking. So I spent a month on the ground training, and I went up. My first wing walk was, a, was my first air show. As part of the event, stuntswoman and wing walker Jane Wicker was performing alongside her pilot, Charlie Schwenker. Wing walking is a dangerous stunt in which people essentially move on a flying airplane. You know, I think it's more of an adrenaline than a nerve for me now, at, at this point. I have, I get concerned when certain things are thrown at me that I'm not, you know, ready for. Wicker was sitting on the wing of Schwenker's aircraft when something went terribly wrong and the plane plummeted to the ground. It immediately erupted in a fiery explosion, and both Wicker and Schwenker died instantly. The cause of death for both was multiple trauma due to an accident. Sean Cunningham's accidental ejection. A pilot for Britain's Royal Air Force, Sean Cunningham was also a member of the Red Arrows, who perform intense aerial stunts. He was preparing to take off for a formation flight with his colleagues from the Red Arrows, famous the world over for their spectacular stunts. In November 2011, Cunningham was performing checks before a flight inside his aircraft when the ejection seat suddenly deployed. He was shot over 200 feet from his plane into the air. Being ejected shouldn't have proved fatal, but the parachute on his seat didn't open. Unfortunately, the primary safety parachute then malfunctioned and Cunningham fell to the ground as a result. He was rushed to a nearby hospital, but was soon pronounced dead. The company that manufactured the seat was ordered to pay just over one million pounds for the incident. We have made and will continue to make every effort to make sure that such a tragic accident could never happen again. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Evil Knievel's Caesar's Palace Stunt Perhaps the most famous stuntman of his generation, Evil Knievel attained worldwide fame through his exhilarating motorcycle jumps. 
On New Year's Eve 1967, Knievel attempted his greatest feat yet, a 141-foot jump over the iconic fountains at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. What struck me most about the oddity of, of that day was seeing this unbelievable crowd. No one had much faith in the event. ABC wouldn't broadcast it live, and Knievel had to fund the filming himself. During the stunt, the bike's speed suddenly diminished. He made that jump. It just seemed like eternity. He was in the air. Not having enough power, Knievel crashed badly. He sustained many debilitating injuries, including a concussion, multiple fractures, and a crushed pelvis. Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.